Hello, I'm Amanda Baxter from Shiny Dime Fibers. I spend a lot of time dyeing skeins of slippery tencel yarn, and I've developed some techniques for keeping yarn from getting super tangled during the dye process. Here I'll show you some of my methods for keeping yarn organized while dyeing. So let's take a look at uh, what good versus bad looks like. Uh, this is a skein of yarn, peacock variegated in case you were wondering, where I tied the ties correctly. I uh, managed the yarn in water nicely and it's a nicely organized skein. This will be good to work with. And this is what happens when you're distracted and you forget your ties and everything. So let's uh, Find a good friend who likes knots if this happens to you because you're not going to want to work with this. So how do we prevent that? Zip tie. I get these from the local hardware store. I get them at Menards. Uh, you don't have to get reusable ones. I just like not having to throw them away all the time. They don't last forever, but they last through quite a few water boilings. I use the zip tie as a way to find the center of the skein while it's wet. And then I scooch it around on the zip tie in order to be able to straighten kinks out of my yarn while it's wet. It's really difficult to find the center of a skein when it's wet and when it's sticking to itself, so this gives me a way to do so. Now I've tried other things besides zip ties and I've found the zip ties work best for me. The connectors do sometimes get tangled in the yarn a little bit, so you do have to be a little bit aware of that. Uh, but use whatever works best for you. Zip ties work best for me, and perhaps you'll find they work for you as well. All right, so now I'm going to show you how I tie figure eight ties on my skeins. Uh, the first thing I do whenever I finish making a skein is I tie the beginning thread and the end thread together with an overhand knot. Overhand knots are more secure, they don't scooch or change size, and I tie it right up against the skein so that it's not any longer or shorter than the rest of the skein as much as possible. And then I'm going to tie a figure eight. To do this I'm going to split my skein in half, it doesn't matter exactly in half, just guess. And then I'm going to take my threads, one end's going to go down, one thread's going to go up, and they're going to twist around each other. And when I twist, I always twist my figure eights in the same direction. And I believe mine are being twisted clockwise. So you'll see every time I make a twist, I always twist my threads the same way. Now I'm going to tie another overhand knot, but I'm going to also make sure not to tie it too tight. I want the figure eight to be somewhat loose so that my die is not resisted by the figure eight tie. So it's tight enough to keep my yarn organized but loose enough that it doesn't cause resistance in dye. It takes a little time to figure out exactly how tight or how loose to make it and it really depends on the yarn that you're tying. So here I'm about to tie uh, two figure eights across the skein. You can do more than one if you wish. Uh, more than one will be a little bit more secure in keeping your yarns organized, but it also could potentially cause a little bit more resistance in your dye. So if you do that, just be careful not to tie them very tight against your skein. I like to tie uh, figure eights on four points across my skein. And just remember, always twist the same direction. In this case, I always twist clockwise. It doesn't matter which way as long as you're consistent and that you don't tie too tight against the skein that you cause resistance in your die later. Again, I'm opening the skein halfway in between. I'm twisting clockwise and then I'm tying an overhand knot. Make sure to trim the ends of your figure eight ties as well so they don't accidentally get tangled up in your yarn later. I'll show you one more time what it looks like to tie a figure eight more than once across a skein. So here I'm splitting it up in two different places. I'm splitting it in thirds, approximately, and then I'm twisting the yarn around each section in a clockwise direction. So clockwise through the first twist, clockwise on the second twist, and then again making sure that when I go to tie my overhand knot that it's not 
pulling the skein too tight. Now I'll show you where the zip ties come in handy. So I have some yarn in a dye bath and what the zip ties are allowing me to do is find the skeins and move them around in the dye bath and also to lift them up and out of the dye bath. I like to lift my skeins out of the dye bath in this way because the weight of the wet yarn will help to straighten out some of the kinks and to keep it from getting too twisted around itself. No matter what you do, the yarn is going to want to kink and twist and get tangled inside the water. But now I can actually open up and find the center of my skein and I'm going to move it around on the zip tie a little bit. Uh, and once I do that, I can actually straighten the yarn out from different places on the skein from time to time and that will help to keep it nice and organized and keep it from getting too tangled. I keep the zip ties on from the minute I get done winding and tying off my skein to the minute I hang it up to dry. Uh, this way I can keep straightening my yarn by lifting it out of whatever uh, pot or rinse bucket or rinse pot that I have it in. I can keep moving it around on the zip tie and I can keep lifting it up and letting the weight of the yarn uh, straighten itself out. The last thing that I do after I'm all done washing my yarn and I've spun it out in a spin cycle to get most of the water out uh, is I snap my skein straight. So even though the yarn is fairly well organized, there's still some twists and kinks because that's what yarn likes to do. Yarn is made of twists. It's going to want to twist. And so I'm going to straighten this out and I'm going to do it while it's still wet. Here I am very carefully uh, moving it around on my wrists and I'm snapping it gently straight. Yarn that is wet can be a little bit weak and it can be broken if you're not careful. Tencel is pretty strong even when wet but even so it's good to start gentle and then slowly um, pop it straight. Look you can see how much straighter that yarn looks already. Snapping it a few times has straightened that first skein out much more than that second skein. Another method I sometimes use is to swing the skein of yarn around my wrist in this fashion. This can be helpful if a couple of your threads have been pulled out of alignment to sort of help straighten that out. Uh, at the end I still snap the skein a few more times just to make sure to get all the kinks out. Much nicer. A little distracted looking because I checked the clock right before this recording and decided I did in fact have time to do this before I had to pick up my kid at preschool. Ta-da! Goofball. Alright, to review, keeping your yarn skeins organized while dyeing, uh, make sure to use multiple figure eight ties across your skein, use reusable zip ties or some other method of holding your skein while it's wet, and gently snap or spin your damp skeins once you're done dyeing to remove the kinks. I once heard somebody describe it as a ramen noodle mess, and I thought that was a pretty apt description. So together, let's keep our yarn skeins organized and avoid a ramen noodle mess. I hope this was helpful. If you ever have any questions, visit shinydimefibers.com and click on the contact link. Or check out my online shop where I carry lots of hand dyed yarn, as well as pre measured and cones of undyed yarn and dye kits. Thanks for watching! Hello, I'm Amanda Baxter from Shiny Dime Fibers. I spend a lot of time dyeing slippery skeins of tensile. <laughs>